what types of treats can you put into a cotton candy machine to make your own custom flavors of cotton candy? In today's video, we're gonna try and find out. We've got ourselves a little home-sized cotton candy machine and we want to test this out. The packaging tells us that we can actually use different kinds of candy to put directly into our cotton candy machine to have different flavors when we're finished. And we want to test that out. We want to see which ones work, which ones don't work, and if we can use homemade candy, that way we can choose whatever flavor we want. Here's the basic idea. We'll first make a batch of cotton candy using the pre-made sugar that's designed for this use. We'll then compare that to regular white sugar and a variety of different candies. We'll also try our homemade candy recipe and maybe even see if we can get some cotton candy that glows under a black light. To start out, let's use the pre-made cotton candy sugar that you can buy at party stores and see what a normal batch of cotton candy should look like so we can compare that to other batches later. I'm turning it on and letting it spin because it doesn't heat up until you hit the switch and the one switch does everything. So we're gonna let this get warm and then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of our candy floss pre-made sugar into the dish and see what we get. How cotton candy machines work is the sugar goes into the little hopper, there's a heat source usually below it, and the heat actually just melts the sugar. Once the sugar is melted, it's thrown out of the sides of the machine, usually through very small holes or a very thin gap. And the liquid sugar is so thin that it cools down like immediately as it leaves the hopper. And so it just forms into these super, super fine threads. And those just get thrown out to the side and they stick to the walls and you use the cone to gather them up and you eat. Okay, we've got some wisps showing up. Very much just looks like there's a lot of busy spiders in there that are just building webs really quick. You can't really see the threads as they get thrown out. They just sort of look like they're appearing all of a sudden. I think the machine has just about run its course with the sugar we put in there. So here we have sort of the standard by which we'll compare other things. This is interesting, we've just got candy fibers floating through the air all over the place. That's what happens if you use the pre-made floss sugar that's just designed for making cotton candy. It looks pretty much just like what you might think of if you've ever had cotton candy at a carnival or a party or anything like that. Tastes pretty much the same. And of course, one of the hallmarks of cotton candy is that it dissolves pretty much instantly once you put it in your mouth. So now let's start trying some other things to see how close they are to this. Next up, let's see what happens if we just take regular granulated sugar and add that to the machine. Last time I used a full tablespoon, but in the end some of it got sprayed out and some of it didn't seem like it wanted to melt very well. So I'm just gonna start with a little less than a tablespoon. Using regular white granulated sugar, here's our result. I gotta say, my first impression is that this works pretty well. I just poured the sugar in after I let it heat up for a bit, it spun out, it looks just as light and fluffy. Of course, this is just white rather than the pink because we didn't have any coloring in it. But to me, that looks pretty much just the same, except for the color. Of course, this one tastes more just like sugar instead of the vanilla flavor that our pink stuff had. Seems to dissolve pretty much the same way in my mouth. Let's try putting in the water. Yep, that looked the same. Just dissolved right through. Let's try one of our hard candy types. These are just little butterscotch discs. And I'm gonna take maybe a couple of these and I don't wanna just put the candy in there just because I think they probably won't end up perfectly balanced across from each other. And this is sort of gyroscopic, so I don't wanna unbalance it. So I'm gonna take these candies and break them up into a little bit of a powder. Well, there were some snafus in that process. For some reason, it kept getting caught on the center and it would just grab all of the floss and pull it in and like bind up. And I was getting these weird long strands and clumps of this stuff rather than just getting the light fluffy webbing texture that we're normally looking for. But we did get some decent cotton textured candy out of this. It's pretty fluffy. It smells like butterscotch. Let's give it a taste. It tastes like butterscotch too. The texture is a little bit different. It seems like it's a little bit thicker, coarser, not quite as fine of strands maybe. Still pretty good though. So these butterscotch candies, I would say definitely work. Let's see how well this dissolves in water. Pretty similar, maybe just a little bit slower, but nothing major. 
I've never had butterscotch flavored cotton candy before, so I kind of like this. This is enjoyable. I thought there would be more color to it too. These were very golden colored going in. Coming out, you can see they've lost most of it. There's still a little bit of the yellowy orange color compared to the normal white sugar. It is more colored, but not as much as I thought it would be. Let's try something a little different. Let's try Jolly Ranchers. Let's try and make pineapple orange cotton candy. Well, once again, we had the issue where it started by binding up a lot in the middle and we were getting these weird strands. It might just be that I'm not letting it heat up enough before we start adding the sugar. In the end, we did start getting the nice fluffy texture that we were looking for. So this is made of two different flavors of Jolly Rancher, orange and pineapple. Got a lot of flavor. This is very strongly flavored cotton candy. I really like that. Before it was getting the good fluffy texture, we were getting these dense kind of rope pieces. Let's try taking some of the thread ropes, putting that into the water. Those definitely dissolved slower. Next up, let's give Lifesavers a try. Now all of the candy we've done so far has pretty much discolored to the point where it's almost white. So I'm gonna try using a couple of the really dark colored Lifesavers and see how that works out. We've got grape and raspberry here. I don't really know if grape raspberry is a good combination flavor-wise, but we'll still see if it works and we'll see if it keeps the color anymore. Oh yeah, I'm pretty convinced I just wasn't letting it get hot enough with the other ones because this one, I let it run for a lot longer. I put it in and it almost immediately started throwing out the threads looking just the way we want it to, not binding into the middle. Pretty sure that's the key. Give it more time to heat up. Also, wow, that seems to turn all to threads really quickly, like even more than the pre-made sugar stuff. Cotton candy made out of Lifesavers. It melted down really well. Seems to be a good fluffy cotton texture. Wow, and really intense on the flavor. There's a lot of flavor on that. Let's try a dissolving test. Pretty much instant dissolving. Next, I've got this giant slab of candy, and if you've seen our video on how to make thumb suckers or casting a Pokeball using candy, this is the same recipe we used for that. It's made of sugar, corn syrup, water, a little bit of color, and a little bit of flavor. I wanna try breaking this up into fine granules and see if it will work in our cotton candy machine, because if it does, it means we can choose the color and the flavor of whatever we put in here. This one's peach. It's the weirdest shaped lollipop ever. There's no stick, you just hold on to a different part of the lollipop. It's working, it's working. Okay, so that worked surprisingly well. I think we got quite a bit more volume on this than we did with some of the others, like the Lifesavers or the Jolly Ranchers. Not as much volume as the pre-made candy sugar stuff, but it's good and fluffy. Let's give it a taste. This had quite a bit of strong peach flavor when I was licking it as a weird lollipop. Let's see how it is. Ooh, that is nice and peachy comparison of the colors, it really took out a lot of the color. Now in the past, we've actually made some candy that glowed under a black light by adding in some vitamin B2 or riboflavin. I wanna see if we can replicate that glow in the fluffy, cottony texture of our cotton candy. So we're gonna take some Lifesavers, crush them down, add in some crushed in vitamin B2 and see if it's a fine enough powder that it can bond to the sugar and really make some glowing cotton candy. Random fact, machine spun cotton candy was invented in 1897 by the dentist William Morrison and confectioner John C. Wharton and first introduced to a wide audience at the 1904 World's Fair as Fairy Floss. Our vitamin B2 glowing cotton candy. This is glowing under a black light because the riboflavin was in such a fine powder that it was actually able to be carried and mix in evenly with all of the spun sugar. It's a pretty cool effect. I do have to say, if you're trying this, you want to be really careful about your balance between the sugar and the riboflavin because it does have kind of a bitter taste. So if you have too much of it, your cotton candy will end up tasting bitter. So you want to just barely have enough that it starts showing up under the black light. Otherwise, it's not going to taste great. 
Lots of types of hard candy work in this machine, including making our own hard candy. Adding a little bit of vitamin B2 can actually make the cotton candy start to glow under a black light. If there's anything else you would like to see us try, let us know and maybe we'll give it a shot. Guys, there is more for you to see. That box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video and you should go check that out. The box at the bottom will show you what YouTube thinks you need to be watching next. And if you hit this bomb in the middle, you'll be subscribed to the channel so you never miss out on a video. Don't forget to ring that bell and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.